What's up, clubbers? GM, GM, GM. Welcome to Web3 Club. In today's video, what we're going to learn is how does a contract interact with another contract? How does a call from a contract to another contract differ from a normal wallet to a different contract? How do we send ETH to a different contract? How do we call a specific method uh, on a different contract? We'll learn all of those things in today's video. I've already prepared some files so that I don't end up writing the code again and again. What I'll do is quickly walk through those files, explain what the code does and then get on the testing part. Hopefully you can learn the concepts here and create your own smart contract bots that can automate a bunch of steps for you on the chain. But before we get started, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you want to send me a message, please leave it in the YouTube comments or if you have a specific question, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. All right, with that said, let's get started. So I already have my remix open and as you can see there are four different files that I've created. One is an interface and then there are three different contracts. So let me just start off with a very simple contract B. The contract basically is named contract B and it inherits the interface A. What is the interface A? The interface A basically defines one method which accepts ETH and is supposed to store that ETH against a specific ID. So contract B has its own implementation of send ETH over here. So it has two mappings, donations and donors. So donation is the ID and the amount of money do donated and donors are the address and the amount of ETH donated. So whenever we call this method send ETH, the donations are stored in the ID with the message value and in the in the donors as message.senders address. We also have a function called caller which I have added in all the contracts. We can simply call this function and it returns the message.sender which will help us know who actually sent this message. Similarly, we have a contract C which also implements sort of the interface A. It has a send ETH method but it is not actually implementing interface A. It also has a caller function and has a withdraw function. And thirdly, we have contract A where we have this contract and it is the way through which we will interact with contract C or contract B. So it has a send money function where we send ETH to this function and it takes the address of a contract which sort of implements interface A. And this is how the code looks like. If you want to have a variable which is pointing to a contract which is of the type interface A which means that the contract has inherited from the interface A or at least it has the same methods as interface A. We write it like this interface A space IA which means IA is of the type interface A then equals we write interface A and then in the bracket we enter the address. This address is the address which will be typecasted to interface A. So now because it is typecasted to interface A we get this method send ETH which is available from interface A. So this is how we get an object of a contract that has already been deployed and we can make any call to that. Now notice that in the call uh, the argument is sent at the end but there is a curly brackets over here which has value message dot values. This is how you send ETH as value for the transaction. So when I do value as message dot value I will receive the specific value in the contract which has um, implemented this interface. So this IA, the, the address, the contract, which is at this underscore contract address will receive message dot value as the value, whatever we send over here. Now, of course, to send this message dot value, the contract needs to have that amount of ETH. But what we are doing is making this payable and sending the ETH to this specific call. And that is why this contract will have that ETH because we have just sent it. The second way to make a call to a contract is directly getting the type of that contract. So earlier we did it with interface. Generally that is how we do ERC20 tokens. So we, we have an interface for I, ERC20 and then we typecast the contract address to the IERC20. All right. But we can also do it with the specific contract if we have its own code. So I already have contract C's code. So I'm typecasting the CC variable as the contract C and then calling the send ETH function over there. This also has a caller and we also have a function called get C caller. Here what we are doing is we are typecasting the CC variable again to the contract C and then calling the function caller 
and then returning the value so that we will know who is the message sender all right i hope the code is clear now i will have a link to this code in the description down below so if you want to just follow this whole example you can click on that link and get the code so now i've select i've compiled all the contracts and i've selected this deploy and run transactions tab and now i'll select vmix over here and let me just zoom into things so that it is visible to you guys all right so the first thing that i will do is deploy the contract a the second thing that i'll do is deploy contract b and the third thing is contract c i have all the three contracts here contract a contract b contract c so i can just open them all right i have all the three contracts over here with me now first thing that i want to try is if i just click on caller you can see that it returns the address which matches over here it ends with ddc4 all right so which means that when i make the call it just returns the caller similarly the same result is for contract b and contract c but i have contract c's address with me over here i will just copy this address and paste it over here now what this get c caller method does is it calls the caller function of the contract c which returns msg.sender as you could, as you have seen over here so now if i do this what will be the message.sender value i click on this and lo and behold the value has changed it is not the address ending with ddc4 it is in fact the address that is of this specific contract you can see that's uh, d91 d91 and ends with 39138 ends with 39138 so this is the same address of the contract a all right so whenever a contract calls another contract the message dot sender changes to the calling contract that is one thing but if the contract was just calling its own methods the message dot sender will not change this is the biggest difference that you need to wrap your head around because uh, generally what people make mistake over is that they think the the message dot sender does not change and that is a source of a lot of bugs now let us send money all right so uh, right now if you see in the contract b the donations if i have uh, token one over here there are zero donations all right uh, so if i want to send some eth to this one so i can call this function called send eth and i can add let's say 2000 way all right so now if i make this call and now if i check the donations there are 2000 of donations and if i check my own address for donors you can see that the total amount of eth deposited by me has changed to 2000 okay now what i'm going to do is call this function from contract a so this is the send money function that you can see over here now here what i know is that the contract needs to basically implement interface a and i know contract b does that so i'm going to copy the contract b's address and i'm going to paste it here in this variable and i'm going to use the id 2 this time and i'm going to send 1000 away so now if i click transact the transaction succeeds and if you go to donations and check for 2 you'll see that it has 1000 way deposited but if you check the donations by my address it is still 2000 all right but if i check the donation of contract a it is 1000 so in reality we sent this eth but the credit was given to the contract a this is how it works similarly we can just make this call directly to to the contract c uh, i just wanted to show you that you know you don't need to always have the interface you can have the code of that contract and then make a type casted variable with that and there you go so what you actually need to understand is to make a call to a specific contract what you need is that contracts address and either the interface or the whole code because when you have either of them you can basically call those methods very easily uh, just by normally calling that method like this like having the variable and then dot in the name of the method this is how you pass the argument and this is how you passed the value the eth value or something like that 
a bunch of people had basically asked for this video in my discord and i thought why not just make this today so thank you so much for watching till now if you enjoyed this video if you learned something please hit that like button if you haven't please subscribe to this channel if you have a specific message for me just leave it in the youtube comments and if you have a specific question come join my discord server there are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out and as an added bonus i try to take requests from there because a lot of people have given me a proper reasoning there that why they have not they have some problem understanding some stuff so i hope to see you there in my discord server and i hope to see you again next week as well till then bye bye